Welcome back to Revival Radio. With me again this week, Greg Stevens. Thank, Thank you, Greg. Thank you. You know, last week we really kind of, we you'd say we kind of talked a little bit about politics, but we really went a lot further back, the, the comparison between Israel and America, patriotism, nationalism. And where we left last week was really teaching. We have to teach our children and yes. our children's children. And I remember, uh, Greg, you know, you and I had grandfathers that spoke a lot into our lives. And this is why a grandfather has a place that a father doesn't have. He has in, influence over a child. Uh, I'm thinking of your dad and your grandfather. Your yeah. grandfather had influence in you in a, in a different way than your father, not to diminish the role of the no. dad, but the grandfather's way. So this is why we need to keep imparting into generation to generation to generation. And it wasn't sitting down talking with me. It was going to the hardware store. Yeah. So I'd go to the hardware store with him. And while I don't realize that a lot of the life lessons were happening at the hardware store yeah. or let's get a snow cone on the way home, that yeah. type of thing. Those were those moments that I look back at and I remember, oh, he, he taught me that. And yeah. that's what Israel was commanded to do at the start of the covenant with, with uh, Abraham. See, Noah didn't get that covenant. Noah had the same covenant as a Adam, replenish the earth. But when he chose a family then because yeah. government wasn't working, after Noah, we get the Tower of Babel, Babel, mm -hmm. and God divides the nations, and that's a whole other thing. And so that's when nations begin to happen. So he's going to choose a nation, but he's going to do it in a family first. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Started with a family. That family, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, J he will redig the wells of his father. He, in other words, he's going to follow what his father had showed him and what he had taught him. And that's, that's one of the things that's been under attack in America, uh, even in our modern I mean, every dad on television. Now, it used to be uh, Leave it to Beaver when I was a yeah. kid. And Ward sure. Cleaver, and he was a great guy. And then the dads got stupid. Yeah. You remember be, Archie oh, Bunker? And yeah. The dads got dumber and more, you know. We emasculated the role of the father. Yes. And, and so we really, like it wasn't important. And that all goes into why we're dealing in, in this nation with what we're dealing with now is because of all these little decisions that are made one at a time, one at a time. And uh, pretty soon we end up with a generation that doesn't know the difference between socialism and patriotism right? and nationalism. And they think it's a bad thing. And let's tear, pull down all of our memorials. Or what a boy is and what a girl is. Yeah. You know? we, we, everything, everything goes into a place of it's up for discussion. And I think this is what happens. Israel, their problem was they always wanted to be like the other guys. They mm -hmm. always wanted to be like the other nations. And it would get them in trouble. But when God has set them apart. Set them apart for a specific purpose yeah. and reason. And that was the United States of America. We were set apart, the city on a hill, to be yeah. something special to evangelize the world from. And when, it's, when we want to be like the other guys is what gets us in trouble. Our founding fathers did not want to be like England right. or like Europe. And now we've got a whole generation that wants to go back. They, they love the queen and princess die and everything. And I get that. But we left that, and we left that for a reason. We didn't want a caste system to where the wealthy and the, and mm. the people that the are servants. The haves and the have-nots, yeah. yeah. And, and dividing along socioeconomic lines. But see, all of this was done by covenant. And God, I, you know, we talk about the fall. Adam fell. I, I don't like that word. I like to say this. God made everything perfect, handed to man, we broke it. Yeah. And so it was a broken thing. And so Jesus is described as grace and truth, Gene. He's both of these things at the same time. Example, when AIDS hit the world in the 80s, we had a bunch of TV preachers saying, that's God's judgment, that's because of their sinful life, and yeah. all the preachers piled on with it. Well, that made us look bad in the world's eyes that we're judgmental and we hate them and all that, which is not the problem. It's not true, but it appeared to be true. But that's truth. That lifestyle it becomes created, it becomes a truth yeah. at that point. We left out the grace. You can't have, you, you got to be both of these things together. So we were broken and God established several covenants to get us back to a place of unbrokenness with the cross. But it didn't end at the cross. We had an assignment that we're supposed to do now that Jesus is gone. He handed it off like the monarch butterfly you mentioned to us. Mm -hmm. And so we can't ever have a generation that forgets the word and forgets the covenant. Let me put it to you this way. We have a lot of students 
that graduate even from Christian schools, and we've taught them a lot of stories. I, I liken it like this. If you had a whole lot of balloons, and on one balloon is David and Goliath, another balloon is Samson. Do you have a favorite Bible story? Another balloon is... Uh, well, David and Goliath was mine. David and Goliath, Samson, Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. all, you got all these balloons, but they're just individual stories yeah. that we've never put a bow on and connected them. All of these situations were brokenness. See, we need to look at a lost world mm -hmm. using homosexuality and AIDS. Mm -hmm. That is a broken person yeah. trying to be unbroken. And they're doing it through natural means, through world's means. And the church never made that connection. Okay, you, we talk about revival in this program. Yep. When I was a kid, I was in a lot of revival meetings. Yes, Matter of fact, right. I padded the stats of a lot of evangelists because I got <laughs> saved every night. That's right. Um, so in revival, there were times when my mother, and I still had school the next day. Oh, yeah. But we were always there. However late it went. And the later, the better. It was so good, the preacher didn't even preach last night. Yeah, you know, that's, but, you know, that's how you do how a good church was. Yeah. But we were always there. And yeah. we'd sleep sometimes on the pews, but I was in that environment. And I'm not knocking children's church, but we didn't have children's church. We didn't no. have things to entertain us. No, and, in fact, that was looked down on if you had something entertaining. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, you should be in church. But there was something to us being in those meetings, yeah. even if we were sleeping, even, in the if atmosphere. We were, even if we were draw, drawing, we were in the atmosphere. And I think in some ways, for all of our technology, we've in maybe ways hurt our children because now they have a bunch of balloons that are individual stories and they go to college or they go to school, the universities, and their faith is challenged and they don't know why. They just have these individual stories. They don't know why these stories impact their life because we never taught them the history of Samson is power gone sour, that in the end, God will use him. Yeah. But we don't know the covenant that he came from and what he walked away from or Josiah mm -hmm. or when the kingdom split. We've never a applied all of those things that we see as tradition. We've never applied them to how it impacts our daily life. And Jesus will do a great job of that with his disciples when they would fail or something would go wrong or they were challenged, he'd have a teaching moment. Yeah. And he'd sit down. We mentioned it last week that dinner, we lost the American dinner. Mm -hmm. We don't have dinner with each other anymore. And I go to a restaurant today and <laughs> people are sitting at the same table texting each other at the same table. Yeah, looking at their phones. And yeah. I've been guilty of it. Okay. And, and in all those things, think of how Jesus ministered to people. I'm coming to your house for dinner. Yeah. He said to the one guy, it was always over meals. So most of the Jewish festivals, uh, Jewish uh, laws, the, the, the Jewish the, the festivals of the mm -hmm. Lord that they keep all, all revolve around dinner. Yeah. All revolve around food. When he fed the 5,000, we're dealing with food again. See, we've, we lost that. Now you can't have dinner if the TV's not on. Some people will fill their plate and go to another room. Right. And so that's just simple ways that we can reinstill this, this well, connection. Well, what we're talking about is not forgetting your heritage. Right. And this is the way you don't know. And we talked about, you know, you used to talk about going to the hardware store with your grandfather and learning things from him. Uh, I remember my granddad asking me this. And it was uh, in an age of bell-bottom jeans and flower power and, you know, everything in I remember him, I was the youngest, on one side of the family, I was the youngest grandson. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was older. And I was the youngest kid and the youngest grandson. So I remember him ask, to this day, I remember him asking me, well, Gene, what do you think about all of this? What do you think about Vietnam? And, and by the time the Vietnam question came along, I was older. But, you know, I thought, wow, he, really, he wants to know what I thought. Well, I, I don't, couldn't tell you what I said, but I remember, wow, he wants to know what I think. And we had a conversation. You know, having a good conversation. He listened to you. He listened to me. And having a good conversation is will actually encourage you as the parent or the teacher to really bring out things that maybe you've forgotten the story as you pass it on to your, your children and your children's children. Hey, you know, we, we kind of dismiss that as that's old hand or that's, uh, 
so traditional and, you know, it's uh, not hip and not cool but or whatever. But the reality is that is how we keep our faith from generation to generation, from faith to faith to faith. Uh, our kids and our grandkids now are dealing with things that you and I never thought of. Um, I remember the big thing in my school was go drink beer, <laughs> you know, get, get somebody to get you the beer, you know, and uh, smoking was too expensive. But, you know, <laughs> but some for some reason, beer was okay. Yeah. And that was the big deal. Now look at all these issues you had. I mean, you know, there was, you know, we didn't have, if somebody's dad had a magazine, a dirty magazine, you know, you knew about it. But that was, it wasn't available. Yo, you were front. looking for the guy who had the National Geographic. Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, <laughs> so, but now, yeah. on their own phone at school. They're assaulted. Yeah. All the time. And so it, it is a different thing. And this is why you've got to keep an open door that you can discuss. Uh, like my daughter, she, we have a code word that she can say that code word. She will not be in trouble. And I'm coming to get her, yeah. whatever situation that she's in. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to, it's not, you know what I mean? We're just yeah. going to get you out of trouble. But that's what's going to happen. See, I remember dinner at times being the Inquisition. Oh, yeah. So what'd you do in school day? What'd you learn? What were, what'd you make on that test? And you hated it. It's like, oh, my God. I'm, okay, if I can get through the first part of Dad asking me what I made on the Spanish test, I'll be all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But my grandfather and all that, he wasn't that way with that. And that, that's the thing that I'm trying to instill. And it's hard to do because you want to, you know, be that other guy. Yeah. You know, well, let me tell you what you need to do. Yeah. See, here's yeah. the thing about children. I remember Brother Hagen saying this. Dad Hagen said, your children, when they're really young, are the closest to heaven. That's where they came from. And they're still connected for that age of accountability. And if you'll listen to them, they'll give you a hint at what their calling is. Mm. If you listen to them, you might hear them talking about things that are science or things that are music or, or preaching the word or whatever. You might hear that come out of them, things yeah. that they're interested in, things that they're excited in. And so now you begin to nurture that. You see certain things in their life that they like. I mean, my daughter, I wanted her to be this athlete. And we put her out on the field and she was Ferdinand the Bull. I mean, she was singing and dancing. And I remember saying to her one day, would you please stop singing? We were going down the road. And she said, Dad, that's my calling. That's my purpose. And I'll never forget that. I went, oh, Father, forgive me. Yeah. But she spoke it out. I heard it. And if you'll listen, they'll tell you what their purpose is yeah. and why they're here. Wow. And then that's you good. can you begin to nurture that, not drive them that way, but just begin to nurture that. And J Jesus did it with his disciples. You're Peter. Yeah. You see what I mean? You're this, you're that. Yeah. He'll change their name. God will change his name if he has to. But the thing is, is we, you have to listen. Well, and I think that we, we in church have taught, and rightly so, you had to listen to, um, listen to the, what you read in the Word, listen to your pastor, listen to your authority, listen. And those things are all true, but sometimes we never look at it in the other way around, is I need to listen to you, or I need to listen not just always, it's not just one way. It's both ways, and I think that's important. Because, I mean, there have been some brilliant uh, things my kids have said that I, I, oh, wow, I never thought of it that way. You know, you, they have a good insight. Maybe that's what you're a referring great to. Example, a great example of this in the Bible is uh, Samuel. Hannah gives him over to the priest. Remember right. that? And he kept hearing him call his name, and he went to Eli saying, you called me. Remember that? Yep. And why was it he thought it was Eli? That's his authority. Yeah. See, your children, I remember one of my children saying, I've never heard from God. I go, yeah, you have. If you've ever heard, even now, your dad's voice yeah. in something you're thinking about, you just heard from God. Yeah. He speaks through authority. It's true. Oh, it's and good. so you've, you've heard him speak to you in, in these things. And, and this is why we've got to begin to speak freedom. Even if you think they're not listening to you, keep saying it and just keep saying it and keep saying it and do it lovingly. And just telling them who they are and that you're my child, man. You can do anything you set your mind to. Yeah. You know, and, and those kind of things. Don't tell them their problem. Tell them who they are. That's right. You know, we've lost, you know, as you're saying that, I'm thinking back on our founding fathers. And we've really lost something when it comes to the commitment, the drive, 
the uh, the passionate, um, you know, the founding fathers had to overcome so many things. Think about all the fifty six signers that come. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, they these people knew what they were signing. They knew they were signing uh, their exit strategy at, because they were putting it all. In the Better line. to sign together than and hang together than than individually. Right. But think about what they saw yeah. when they were young and heard about. They heard about the Great Awakening. Right, they did. And they heard about the preachers before them. And that carried over into, into what they were doing, that they were willing to take a stand against tyranny. They were willing to say when their government got corrupt. As a matter of fact, one of the things that's written in the Declaration of Independence, any government mm -hmm. that oversteps its boundary, it's the right of the people, I'm paraphrasing, to change or abolish that form of government for a better one. And so we've got to remember that, that that's, that's us too, that we can't sell our liberty and our freedom to centralized government. And we've been tested, Gene, yeah. like never before in the church. See, I remember when I was a kid, the preaching part, not so much. I can't remember many of the sermons, but the healing lines or when the move of yeah. God happened, when I was a kid, I would stop <laughs> drawing pictures on the paper and, and I'd set up, up and, and look yeah. because when the presence of God would happen. And you know, that's a key point. Your children recognize, they may not know how to verbalize it, but they do recognize the anointing. And they know when something's up, something's up, I need to, like you just described. And I think as parents, we do good to watch for those moments. Watch for those things. See what, watch your kids in the anointing. And, the, and you're right, you know, what you said earlier, so many of us have relegated the kids to children's church and not let and them I'm not be against that. children's church. No, not at all. At all. But we've, we've, we've let school become the babysitter, and we don't yeah. know what's happening there. We've let children's church teach them the word, and we don't get involved any other than that. And they need to see, guy, let me, dad, they need to see you worship. Yeah. They need to see you pray. Yeah. They need to see you love mom. You know, that example is far better than any word you can say. Put them in a meeting where the anointing's flowing. Yeah. And, and one word from God, one moment, the Holy Spirit can do more in just a teeny bout than, than all your words put together. So as we, as we continue, you know, in, in the final few minutes of this program, you know, we started off talking about memorials and, and why it's good. You know, the good thing about memorials and traditions is that we remember and how it's important to go back and remember what God has done. And, you know, it's, it even goes to something as simple, Greg, you know, it, God gives you a word. Yes. I remember God gave me a word back in 2001. Made no sense to me until last year. And really in the fulfillment of it this year. Um, <clears throat> the word was this. It said, you're going to be involved in politics, but you're not going to run for office. Hmm. <laughs> and it did, made no sense. And though here, here we are now, like, oh, okay, that word came to pass. So it's important to go back and look at what God told you and watch it come to pass, but also to share your real life story of what happened. This is what happened. This is how God helped me out of a situation. This is what God did. Those are important things to share with and your family. And you hang well. on to those words, Gene, even when it doesn't make sense to you. And sometimes you need to keep it quiet. I remember I was working for a large ministry in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I was the homeowners association president for our neighborhood. And they were trying to get me to run for city council. And I told my boss and he goes, well, I'll get you elected. We got enough people in this church. We'll get you elected. You should do it. And I remember saying something to Michelle about it. And she said, are you called to do that? And I realized, no, I'm not. I don't want to do that. Then I get out years later in California and I'm pastoring. And they came to me and said, um, you need, we want you to run for office. I'm like, Listen, I've already settled this argument. I'm not doing this, right? And I, I heard, I didn't hear anything. Matter of fact, it's like I didn't hear God for a day or two. It's like, what's going on here? You know that distance you get? Yeah. And I said, Lord, what's the deal? And he said, I called you to run for office. Do what they ask you to do. Wait, one minute you told me not to, and now you're telling me to do it. It's all yeah. timing. Timing. And I went, no. But what I did in running for that Senate seat, state Senate seat, set me up for things I'm doing now. Yeah. And, and it's all just following, learning to follow his direction and his steps. 
It's Sounds not good. difficult. No, it's actually pretty easy. Before we get off the air today, I want to play this clip uh, with Ronald Reagan where he talks about the shining city on a hill. The past few days when I've been at that window upstairs, I've thought a bit of the shining city upon a hill. The phrase comes from John Winthrop, who wrote it to describe the America he imagined. What he imagined was important because he was an early pilgrim, an early freedom man. He journeyed here on what today we would call a little wooden boat. And like the other pilgrims, he was looking for a home that would be free. I've spoken of the shining city all my political life, but I don't know if I ever quite communicated what I saw when I said it. But in my mind, it was a tall, proud city built on rocks stronger than oceans, windswept, God-blessed, and teeming with people of all kinds living in harmony and peace. A city with pre-ports that hummed with commerce and creativity. And if there had to be city walls, the walls had doors, and the doors were open to anyone with the will and the heart to get here. That's how I saw it and see it still. And how stands the city on this winter night? More prosperous, more secure, and happier than it was eight years ago. But more than that, after 200 years, two centuries, she still stands strong and true on the granite ridge, and her glow is held steady no matter what storm. And she's still a beacon, still a magnet for all who must have freedom, for all the pilgrims from all the lost places who are hurtling through the darkness toward home. We've done our part, and as I walk off into the city streets, a final word to the men and women of the Reagan Revolution, the men and women across America who for eight years did the work that brought America back. My friends, we did it. We weren't just marking time, we made a difference. We made the city stronger, we made the city freer, and we left her in good hands. All in all, not bad, not bad at all. And so, goodbye, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Wow, that's still Im impactful, even hearing it all these years later of uh, President Reagan. City on a Hill, uh, and John Winthrop, what a history. He came and made this place where we're at, you know, such a, such a place well, he, of freedom. He, he's actually prophetically setting out yeah. a course for America. Here's what I'd suggest to you. If you're a pastor, even if you're not a pastor, look it up and nicely tell, nicely tell your pastor this. Find out the spiritual history of your city. Ooh, that's good. And learn to cooperate with what God started there because he's going to finish it like he started it. So like in California where I was at, they set up missions a day's walk yeah. from each other. And so once you know that, Amy Simple McPherson, what did she do? She went to all those places yeah. up and down the coast that had a mission in it. Well, and we, we even on this program talked about uh, Miracle Valley and yep. how Cabeza de Vaca came through and, and all the, there's such history of uh, great thing, erecting big crosses everywhere he went and having signs and wonders. Listen, this is, uh, this even is not- this land. In this that the land. revival capital of the world That's is right. setting on. Yeah. This was the Comanches had this land. We know the stories about, you know, the the Indians and the great revivals. Mm -hmm. You did those stories as well. And then this was a Marine Corps base right. here. And those people helped free and liberate. This is hallowed ground. And, and everywhere you place your foot is hallowed ground. Establish that for the kingdom. That's covenant. What did yeah. you tell him? Abraham. Everywhere the sole of your foot shall tread. He established the borders of this thing. And we are the seed of Abraham right. through Jesus Christ. So you're a covenant person everywhere. Church and state. Separation of church and state. No, I am the church and I'm in the state. So you can't separate me. And it's becoming covenant-minded. Not preachy at your neighbors yeah. and your kids, but just mm -hmm. confident knowing who you are. I'm an American. I have a covenant. I'm a child of God, therefore I have another covenant, and everywhere right. I go, revival happens. Why don't you pray for the folks, Greg? I know they're watching and they've been listening to this, and some are remembering, some have never heard. 
and, and take a few minutes and let's pray for them. We need to preserve the freedoms God gave us because if we don't, no one else will. So Father, I pray right now for a remembrance of the things and the words that you called, the, the words that you've spoken to people like Gene with his assignment here these years later, here it is. Father, I want to have you remind them Put them in remembrance, and I want you to put yourself in remembrance of the words he's spoken over you and your family, and don't let go of it. So, Father, I thank you that you're healing our land one family at a time, and that this family of God will turn into a great and mighty nation, and we will be that city. We will be part of the great awakening. We're connected together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Greg. It's been good to share with this with you. Listen, I want to remind you to go to the, to the website, RevivalRadioTV.com, and please scroll down and go to the Revival History Timeline. And you can scroll through history right through there and see all the different places Revival hit. You can get lost there, go down the rabbit hole of Revival, and, and enjoy everything you see about Revival. You can learn history right there on the website. Show your kids. This is a great way to train the next generation of what God did in revival and reformation. All right, till next time, thanks for watching. And thank you. Remember always, Jesus is Lord. Revival Radio TV started by looking into the past. We know that there's a great awakening and we're at the brink of it and it's breaking out all over the world, but what we were excited to see is that when we go back and uncover a well of revival, we see how God moved with people, sometimes unexpectedly, sometimes through prayer and, and a dedication to God, but we saw how history kind of unfolds in front of us. We've seen so many things. You know, my goal is to take as many people with us. If I can encourage one person to go back and see what history shows us about revival, it sparks a fire and it sparks something into the people that see it. And that brings a revival.